All right, guys, today what we're going to be looking at, we have a Cavalier here, a 2004 Chevrolet Cavalier, and we've got uneven brake pad wear. And so using a 3 8 inch Allen, we're going to remove the caliper, and I'm going to show you what's involved in repairing that and what the cause of it is. So we can tell right away when we try to take these pins out, you know, these, these slide pins, they're really, really stiff and coming out. And what usually causes this kind of uneven wear is because they're binding inside the sleeve or bushing. It's inside this particular design. This caliper is supposed to float on the rotor. And if you have it binding up, then you'll have that problem. You know, I should be able to come in here, for example, with one of these electric type of tools. Set it to the right direction. I should be able to work this out. But it's really struggling. Should be zipping that right out. It's because it's binding inside that bushing. So I'm going to go ahead and finish getting this out, and we'll come back. All right, guys, we've got these loosened up finally. Now, if you come up here and look at the top part of the uh, caliper, and you look right down here where my finger is, you can see part of the threads of where this goes in to the steering knuckle and holds this whole assembly on. It should be with those loosened up now. I should be able to work this off. Just so nothing falls out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and take the rotor off so it's not bouncing around there. Go ahead and set it on the high side down so you don't damage anything against the concrete. Scratch it up or whatever. And so we take a look at these pads. You see here's our inboard pad. Get about that kind of thickness. And there's our outboard pad. So significantly uneven wear, where we're wearing more on the outboard pad than we are on the inboard pad. And that is directly attributable to this problem with these slide pins. Now see this one, it moved a little bit, but I'm having to put a lot of force to get this to move. And this should not be that hard to move. The other one, I can't even get to move at all. I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers and try to pull that out. That is exactly what the problem is here. So now I'm using these pliers with these rubber tips in case I might be able to salvage these pins until we get them out. We don't know if the problem is the pins or the bushings or both. And we see right here we've got a lot of corrosion on the inside of this pin and a lot more at the top. So this pin, it's time to discard it. As you work this around, just be careful you don't twist up the hose. Now this guy is really wedged in there. Again, because it's binding up like this, this is why the pads are wearing unevenly. All right, we take a look at him. We got the same problem. We got a lot of pitted corrosion that we can just feel with our fingers. Now sometimes you can just wire wheel this up and clean it up, but because this particular vehicle, this has been a recurring problem, we're just going to replace them. And I'll show you some part numbers in just a minute. Now while we're in here, since these pads are worn out, we're just going to go ahead and replace those too. What you got to do is just give it a push and get the little notch out of the hole. Pull that guy out. Pull this guy off the uh, main piston. Get yourself a piston compressor. Actually, you know what? I'll just leave this in here. Because when you get around to changing the pads, you need to be able to compress this piston with a tool like this. And you want to be able to let that fluid go back through this hose back into the master cylinder. So we're going to close this gap here so that when we're done, we'll have room for the new pads. A tool like this, I'll leave a link in the description. It's really handy. But once you get it to bottom out, you see we've closed that gap so we have room for the new pads, and we're done with that. So now the last thing we've got are these bushings, these rubber bushings. 
And the way we're going to work with those is we're going to go get a, a flathead tool, and we're going to work in there and break the corrosion seal off of the, the, the place where the rubber touches the uh, cast iron of the caliper. The other thing I'm going to do also on here, just so we don't have anything drop while we're working on this, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bungee. This will let this stay, but also let us work with it so that we don't ever drop it and put any pressure on the hose. So let me get a couple more tools and we'll come back. All right, guys, all you're going to need to do, I took the other one out already, just show you this one. All you're going to need to do is take a small flathead screwdriver. You can see in here we're going to work this away from the bore. And it's probably, you know, you can stick silicone spray in here. I'm just using a little bit of PB Blaster. All we're going to do is kind of grease up the interface between this rubber and this bore. Because I suspect when we get in here, we'll find out, like the one on the other side, that it's really rusted out. And as soon as you can see this thing spinning, then you know you're halfway there, probably more than halfway there. And coming on this side, again, we're just trying to orient this for protecting the hose. Get this guy a little bit of a separation as well. As soon as it feels like it's twisting on this side too, just come in here with a pair of long nose pliers. And just gently wiggle it out. If it doesn't want to give out, just kind of stick it back in. That's what this bushing looks like. It's just a rubber bushing these guys fit into. This, these J cars, it's a very simplistic design. And so if you get any kind of corrosion in here, it's going to bind up. The other thing that happens is sometimes shops or even folks, they don't realize they put synthetic brake grease in here. And these the plastic that these are made of, it actually will cause them to swell. The only thing that you can safely use on this particular material is something that's silicone based, like this AC Delco type of silicone brake lubricant. It's the same kind of stuff when you get new brake pads, like in this brake pad package. If you go inside here, inside the uh, box, down here at the bottom, past the other ones, they'll give you a, a, a sample size of that silicone compound. You know, in the case of the pads, they're giving it to you to put on the the edges that rub on the outside of the steering knuckle and on the inside of the, uh, the edges here. But if you use like uh, a Permatex type, you go to the Permatex website, they even have on there that their products, their synthetic products are only for metal on metal, not on metal on rubber. So to replace these bushings, we're going to use this AC Delco 179 1164 part number from GM is 1807226. It's basically four of these along with another package of that silicone lubricant because we're going to lube these up and then we're going to also need some lubricant to do the pads. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to place these pins that we talked about. Again on this particular vehicle it's just a solid hunk of steel. Right? This is not moving. It's a solid hunk of machine steel with a 3 8 allen on one end and then threaded to go into the steering knuckle on the other. Some designs have metal on metal moving. That's actually a better design than this quite frankly. And if you have a lot of trouble with these giving out on you, I'll put a, a picture up here on the uh, side of the video of another AC Delco uh, kind of updated design that actually breaks this part into two pieces. It breaks it into an outer metal bushing that sits inside the rubber bushing and then a, a more narrower bolt that slides metal on metal. So then you'll end up with less of a chance of these guys to bind. But the part number on the pin, the way they came from the factory originally was 179 from uh, AC Delco. 1307 and the GM is 1802388. So what we're going to do before we can put these in though is we got a little prep to do because if we take a look inside this bore we can see there's quite a bit of corrosion inside of here. Now like this one is the worst right you can see really clearly if we zoom in here there's a lot of corrosion in here and the way we're going to deal with that bungee back on here. The way we're going to deal with that is I'm going to take a, a cup wire brush made of brass right? and I'm going to stick it in an extension and I'm going to stick that on the end of a drill and we're going to run that in and out of this bore to get that corrosion out before we install these new bushings. So we're going to take... We've got these 
pretty good, right? We don't have to get them surgically clean, but we just want to get enough of the corrosion off that we don't have as much sticking of the bushing. The bushing is supposed to not move, of course, but we don't want to have any more debris in there than is supposed to be in there. All right, so now let's rebuild it. So we're going to open this guy up. Take two for this side. We're going to do both sides when we have this kind of problem. I'm only going to show the passenger side here. And I'm going to actually take a tube of this that I started to open already from the pads. It's all the same. And they tell you right on the back here. I don't know, I don't have you in the back, but <clears throat> they used to print on the back on the older ones. I just noticed they quit printing that. They used to pr tell you the directions, but I'll tell you what they are, right? You can see there's a larger flange on this side and a smaller on this side. You're going to lubricate up the smaller side. Like so. And then we'll just put a little bit all around here. And the smaller side ends up facing in the direction that the piston goes. So end up pushing this guy in like this until he seats just like that. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other one. And then we're going to put the pins right, in. Guys, let's put these pins in. Very similar to the other. Find what I did with our silicone. Keep, it keeps walking on me, so we'll just use the open brush that I had here. We're just going to put some of this on the pin itself, not on the threads, just on the pin itself and work it inside here. Now you see how that moves in with just one finger? That's how it's supposed to be all the time. And we have a second one here. And that's going to complete this repair. And after this is done, these parts should wear nice and even. Pads, rather. I'm going to be very generous with this because inside these bushings there's some little grooves that help catch some of this silicone and also keep water and debris out as well. It's going to take the excess that gets smeared out though, push him back in and make sure he's moving with just one finger. That's what we want now. And now we're ready to install the new pads. I'm not going to show that because if you guys need to see a video on how to change the pads and rotor, I'll put a link to that up in the upper right. But that is how you fix uneven brake pad wear on a front disc brake system from the late 90s through the early to mid 2000s. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. Love to see them. Otherwise, hit a like on that and help other people find this video. As always, thanks for watching.